Hi, Brett here, and this is the Fault Integrity Series, Level 3. And for the series, as with the first two, you will need a wooden block or a hard covered book, a couple of wooden dowel rods. The shorter one is approximately 40 centimeters, and the longer one approximately 55 centimeters. And a thick towel or blanket which goes underneath the block. You can also use something called Joya toes which are these silicone toe separators. You can find them online at joyatoes.com. They were developed by someone called Joya Irwin which I'd also like to express my sincere gratitude to for being for kindly allowing me to share this amazing practice with you. This practice is really about untangling the fascial thickening in the body and making uh, a sense of ease and balance uh, in the body. And in order to do that, it's important that you work with a sense of ease. So it's not about forcing anything, it's more about the journey than the destination. So be honest with yourself and really Try to stay within that realm of ease. So let's begin. You can start on your back and lie onto the back. Take a moment just to take a radiant breath into all sides of the belly. Let the pelvis be heavy, the ribs be heavy and the head be heavy. And take a small breath into the front, sides and back of the belly, like a balloon expanding in all directions. And then you can take your wooden block or hard covered book and place it underneath the blanket or towel. Place the pelvis onto the block and both legs up into the air, big toes together, heels slightly apart. And moving the legs and arms in opposite directions. As you move the legs away from you, the arms go over the head, elbows gathering toward each other slightly. Let the front ribs be heavy so that the back of the body is long and wide like the underneath of a canoe. The breath is completely relaxed and natural you don't need to synchronize your breath with the movement. But rather just allow the breath to follow its completely natural rhythm. And then bend both knees, hands onto the knees, making circles with the hips. So knees move away from you, apart, around and together. Freeing up releasing any tension in the hips, staying within that realm of ease. Changing direction of the circles. And then place both feet onto the floor. Remove the block from under the pelvis. Pause just for a moment. 
The next one, you're going to take the short pole behind the knees, grip the pole with the back of the knee, and slightly flex the toes as if you have a pencil between the toes. This next one is a twist. So the knees and the arms are moving in opposite directions. And drawing a little bit of a figure of eight with the knees and with the arms. This movement begins with the belly, with the navel. So it's as if you're moving from the navel and the legs just go for the ride. Also try to let the head turn with the legs if possible. Keep the big toes together and try to keep the inner knees close together. You may find at first the knees are not easily able to be together and that can take some time. Then remove the pole from behind the knees and continue now. The same thing this time with the legs up in the air. Drawing a figure of eight with the feet in the air and the arms moving in the opposite direction. And then both knees. Place the feet onto the floor, hands behind the head. Extend the right leg out, point the foot down, lift the toes, bring the foot back, flex the toes. Foot down, lift the toes, foot back, flex. One more time, foot down, lift the toes, foot back, flex. Switch sides. Extend the right, the left leg down, point the foot down, lift the toes, foot back, flex, foot down, lift the toes, foot back, flex, one more time, foot down, lift the toes, foot back, flex. Rest the head down, fingers now go underneath the ribs and press upward into the diaphragm. You want to find that part which feels a little thick, which for most people is nearer to the middle part of the ribs. Leave your left foot on the floor and pelvis ribs and head heavy. Swing the right leg up and down, eyes open for two swings and closed for two swings, creating and staying within a sense of ease so that it's not about how far you go, but can you be honest with yourself as you swing the leg, that you're not trying to go too far, but just working within that easy range for your body. Switch sides. Swing the left leg up and down, eyes open for two swings, and close for two swings. Pelvis, ribs, and head heavy. You may also find at first that there's a few clicks and clunks in the body, and this is quite normal can take some time for that to work its way out. Turning on to the right side now. Support your head with your right arm and then lift the lower leg, the right leg diagonally toward the opposite shoulder. Eyes are looking up and to the right for this one.
bend both knees, feet together, left arm up in the air, as you bring the left knee forward, the arm goes up. So as your arm comes forward, the knee lifts. As the arm goes back, the knee lowers. Try not to let the pelvis roll back so that you're just moving the leg and not the back, not the pelvis. Then rest the little toe of the bottom foot down, lift the top leg, thigh turned out as you lift. So make sure that the knee is not locked at any point during this movement, so that the movement really is in the hip. You don't want to be using momentum for this movement. And again, just go as far as you comfortably can go. Bend your left knee, rest your head down, lengthening out the left thigh, tailbone forward, knee moves back slightly, front ribs in, keep the heel toward the outside of the buttock if possible, and take a small breath into the belly. Release the left leg, straighten both legs, feet together, knees slightly apart, drawing a circle in the air with that left arm, freeing up any tension in the shoulder socket. So it's rotating that ball and socket joint of the shoulder like a pestle and mortar. change direction of your circles. So you're looking to make a nice even circle in the air with the hand. Try to keep the thumb and index finger together for this one. And then turning on to your left side Support your head with your left hand. Top leg bent and lift the lower leg diagonally toward the opposite shoulder. So you can lean back slightly for this one. Eyes look, and look up and to the left slightly. And again, only go as far as you comfortably can go. At, at first you may find the leg feels kind of heavy with this, but in time you find the a way to move that feels like you're staying within a sense of ease. Bend both knees, feet together. Right arm up in the air, feet stay together, and then as you bring the arm forward, the knee lifts. As you take the arm back, the knee lowers. Try to keep the pelvis still, so that it's just your leg that's lifting, and you're not rolling the pelvis back. Hook the little toe of the bottom foot down, lift the top leg up and down, and as with the other side, keep the knee unlocked. Thigh is turned outwards for this movement. Watch as you lower leg, the leg that the thigh is not turning in. 
for some people what happens as the leg lowers is the thigh wants to kind of do that. So try and keep that thigh turned out the whole time. Bending the right knee, hold the right foot, heel toward the outside of the buttock, lengthening out the thigh, tailbone slightly forward, rest the head down, front ribs in, and take a small breath into the belly. Release that, straighten both legs down, feet together, rotating the right arm in order to free up any tension in the shoulder socket. Nice even circle with that arm. Change direction of your circles. And then coming back onto your back. This next one, you're going to have the short pole, the short dowel behind the knees again. And the hands behind the head. This next one is about lengthening the back of the body. So keep the big toes together and the knees quite close together and then it's like a mini roll up so you slightly lengthening the tailbone and slightly lengthening the back of the neck you can let the head rest back into the hands as you lower you don't need to lower the head all the way back to the floor and it's as if you've got a pencil behind the toes to keep that pole gripped with your knees. And then remove the pole from behind the knees, take both legs up into the air, still with the big toes together and heels slightly apart. may be difficult for those of you who are a little tight in the back of the legs. So in that case, you can bend your knees a little more. And bend both knees. Rest the head down. Take the block underneath the pelvis again and just slide the block in under your blanket or towel take both legs up into the air hands up above the head this time and the fingertips are resting on the floor and the thumbs resting on the floor as well elbows gathering in toward each other slightly and then Scissoring the legs back and forth so the inner knees just lightly brush past one another. Pelvis is heavy, ribs are heavy, head is heavy. And just keep the breathing moving in its own natural rhythm. Eyes can glance left and right each time the leg comes up, then release the arm, same arm with leg, left arm with left leg, right arm with right leg, and again the eyes glance left and right each time the arm comes up. Then opposite arm and leg, 
And this time you can let the head slightly roll each time the arm comes up. Bend both knees, rub the hands together, place the palms of the hands over the eyes, let the eyes just relax for a moment, and then you're going to extend one leg at a time out in front of you, again keeping pelvis, ribs and head heavy, still breathing into the belly, that radiant breath in all directions like a balloon expanding. So this one is kind of like a bicycle action. Don't try and take the legs too low. Then lean onto the right side of the pelvis, knees apart and together, like a butterfly action of the legs. Feet don't need to stay together. And then lean onto the left side of the pelvis, same thing. Knees, legs apart and together. It's a little bit of a leaning inward of the elbows to keep the upper back spread. Then in the center, take both hands behind the head. Let the head rest back into the hands. And again, you don't need to keep the feet together for this one. Try to keep the lower and upper leg connected to each other by slightly flexing the toes. It's like you've got a pencil behind the toes. That creates some firmness in the back of the knee. So it's like you have a pencil behind the knee as well that you're squeezing. This one helps to free up tension in the hips. Rest the head down. Fingers under the ribs as we did earlier, pressing up into the diaphragm. This is one option. Or Second option is fingers holding the collarbones from the top. It's another area that we tend to get thickened. As you bend the knees, let the thighs drop in toward the ribs slightly. So there's a little bit of movement in the hips as well as the knees. Your big toes together, heels slightly apart and inner knees together. And then place both feet onto the floor, remove the block from under the pelvis. Take the short pole behind the knees, the long pole between the palms and the twist again. So arms and legs moving in opposite directions. Movement happens from the belly. Keep the inner knees together if possible. And it's like you're drawing a little figure of eight with the knees. And the arms as well if possible. You may find the second twist feels a little different to the first time you did it. If you manage to stay within the realm of ease. And then remove the poles. If you tied in the back of the legs, you could put the block back under the pelvis for this next one. And this one is a double wing exercise, so the arms and legs are your wings. Arms and legs in and out simultaneously first. 
Again, don't try and go too far with this. It's not about how far you go, but rather just staying within the realm of ease. Then pause a moment and opposite arm and leg. So as the legs go out, the arms come up. As the arms go out, the legs come up. Hands behind the head. And one more roll up. This time you're going to let the knees bend as you move them away from you. So again, it's a lengthening of the back of the spine. Chin comes in as the legs come toward you. And then the head rests back into the hands as the legs move away from you. And rest the head down, rest the feet now. The next few exercises are for the shoulders. So you can take the block under the pelvis again. And rest the pelvis onto the block. Take the short pole between the hands, between your index and middle fingers and hold in the center of the pole. Both legs up into the air. Lean the legs slightly to the right, so you're leaning onto the right side of the pelvis. Bend both elbows. Keep the pole aligned with the center line of the body. As you take the pole back, the elbows gather slightly. As you bring the pole forward, the elbows move out. And keep your eyes open for this so that you can notice if the pole is in fact staying aligned with the center line of the body and not drifting off to one side or the other. Then lean onto the left side of the pelvis. Same thing. Pole moves back and forth as you're leaning onto the left side of the pelvis. Elbows gather as the pole goes back and elbows move out as the pole comes forward. Try to keep the pole parallel with the midline of the body. Then in the center, take both legs apart, lengthen into the outer edge of the feet. This one is like a chopping wood action. Elbows are straight. And just with a sense of ease, moving the pole back and forth. Then place the pole down and lean onto the right side of the pelvis again. Inner knees together, left foot slightly toward you, right foot slightly away. Thumb and index finger together as you take the arms out. The palms face down toward the floor. Keep the elbows slightly bent for this. Eyes glance out each time the arms 
move out. So your eyes can look slightly to the left and slightly to the right with each movement. You'll notice I'm also slightly flexing the wrist as I take the arm out. Then leaning onto the left side of the pelvis, right foot slightly toward you, left foot slightly away. Coming back to the first side, this time palms face toward you, and again left foot slightly toward you, right foot slightly away, and your knees together, head rolls to one side and then to the other. So the palms face up to the ceiling at the lower part of the movement, and face toward your head at the upper. Then leaning onto the left side of the pelvis, right foot slightly toward you, left foot slightly away. Particularly useful these shoulder movements if you have stiffness and tension in the shoulders for bringing an evenness and ease to the shoulders. Feet onto the floor, drawing a circle in the air with the hands. So you follow one hand and then the other, one hand and then the other. So little fingers touch at the bottom part of the movement and back of the hands touch at the top of the movement. So the eyes are looking clockwise first. So you follow one hand and then the other. And then after a little while, change the direction of the eye movement. So you keep doing the same thing with your hands. You simply change what your eyes are doing. Then remove the block from under the pelvis. Bring both knees in toward the chest. Extend the left leg down. Lift the head to the knee. Press the right knee away from you. Take a small breath into the belly. Slowly exhale, release the knee, bring the knee to the chest and inhale one more time. Hold both knees. Extend the right leg down. Lift the head to the knee. Press the knee away from you. Take a small breath into the belly. Release the knee, bring the knee to the chest, and inhale one more time. Rest the head down. Place the feet onto the floor. So there are three options for this next pose. Option one is to come up high and do it with your hands behind you like this. Option two, a little lower onto the elbows. And option three, if you're able to, lie all the way back onto your back. The foot is pointing back and the ankle 
is leaning in slightly toward the buttock in order that your upper and lower leg are well connected. If you're able to lie on the floor, then you can take the short pole between your hands, gather the elbows in, and let the head roll with ease from side to side. You're pressing through your left foot and lift your tailbone slightly. Take a small breath into the belly. Keep the front ribs dropping in. And then release, switch sides. So same with the other side. Three options, either high up like this. Second option is on the elbows. You'll notice that my knee is not touching the floor. So it's more important that you have length in your back than your knee touches the floor, which is why it's better to think of lengthening your tailbone and drop the top of the pelvis back and ribs in than trying to get the knee down. So with the pole between the palms, if you are able to do this with your back on the floor, and then rotating the head side to side. Slightly lift the tailbone. Small breath into the belly, front ribs in. And then remove the pole. Take both legs up into the air and let the legs bring you up to sitting, knees closing, release the head down, take a small breath, and then release, lean back slightly, and a couple of options here, you can take the legs up just a little, or a little higher if you're able to, relax the shoulders, Roll back over the top of the pelvis, front ribs in, and come back up again. Release the head, lean back a little, take both legs up, relax the shoulders, relax the elbows, roll back over the pelvis. And come back up from there. One last time, release the head. Lean back a little, front ribs in. Roll back over the pelvis, front ribs in. And come back to sitting. Final one, come onto your hands and knees and find the right distance so that your pelvis is able to come all the way through with ease. Then move the sit bones back toward the heels. Release the head. Inhale. Slowly exhale as you come forward and only lift the head once the pelvis is all the way through. Again, move the sit bones back, release the head, slowly come forward, exhale, and lift the head. One more time, sit bones back, release the head. Slowly come forward, exhale, sit all the way back toward your heels, rest the head down, 
take the arms back in line with the feet and just rest for a moment. And that completes our Tensegrity series. I would recommend doing this practice daily at first. You can split it up into two sections, morning and evening, if you don't have time. And if you are challenged by this practice, it's probably a sign you need to do it regularly. So when I first started doing this practice, I did it for nearly 10 years. So in order to create ease in your body, try to be regular with it, like brushing your teeth. Thank you. Namaste.